you get this asked very often i'm sure about the break that you took what was that like for you everything has grown i got married i wanted to give that time to my uh, home to my kids but while i did that 10 year break i launched imagine a mumbai film company i was never not working i had kept acting on a standstill for a while i just wanted to take a break from it you know i've seen motherhood the struggles of motherhood i'm a different person you forget to analyze your own life and see how much you can grow from that itself when i became a mom i think the way my kids open my eyes is unbelievable my son just put things into perspective so well he's like you love flash who's my dog but you're eating a chicken almost being a hypocrite right as a mom there's so much to learn from your children the funniest misunderstanding you've ever had with your husband due to your marathi south indian cultural blend we don't have misunderstandings yeah unfortunately so, i have been someone who's worked in the south industry mm-hmm. when i was from bombay i always chose it over what i was getting here because i chose the kind of roles that i was getting there so for me it was like wow it's something new <laughs> to figure out you know there was no I, culture shock there was no culture shock i remember when i first met ritesh he was <laughs> like this is going to kill me but this uh, he used to be like I know I'm not supposed to pick favorites on the show, but today that rule doesn't apply. Oh yay! I'm so excited to no, host someone I'm really you. fond of. As thank is everyone actually. I mean, who isn't fond of her? Thank you so much. She yeah. radiates authenticity in everything she does, whether that's working on screen across six different industries, being a mum, a producer, internet's favorite biker, <laughs> <I get that. laughs> or a purpose-driven entrepreneur. Yeah. You lead with love and all your heart. Janita Deshmukh welcome to sustainable tea with Shreya and thank you so much for being here thank you so much Shreya i'm so glad to be on and i think you're doing a fabulous job yourself uh, uh, you're giving it a platform you're giving it a place and i think it's most required at this point in time thank you so much i mean so much coming from mm-hmm. you as someone who's also leading the way <laughs> um we met 12 years ago yes 12 years ago time. when you yeah. were <laughs> when i was i don't know how yeah, i was 15 yeah, i yeah, was 15 yeah, yeah. yeah we met 12 years ago yeah. and that was my first film debut if you remember there was an exam scene that you were writing and yeah. i was sitting right behind yeah, you yeah, so that was absolutely, my first yeah, foray absolutely into, i i stayed films. in your house so yeah. i know very very much and great food at that home, was the so. first time you tried vegetarian yeah i mean that was the first time i hardcore had only vegetarian and i loved the food yeah. so yeah how do you feel about being vegetarian for that period of time like back then Was so it, you know initially i had all these uh, misconceptions that how am i going to get through these three days of being only vegetarian <laughs> with no egg today i i mean i, I was th- uh, today i'm thinking what was i thinking then <laughs> but uh, yeah but those three days i remember when i came to your ho- home we were so non veg i was so non vegetarian that i uh, because starting from breakfast my breakfast never meant poha or yeah. upma or alu paratha my poha, my breakfast was eggs Mm-hmm. So starting right from there it was only animal protein in my uh, you know day so initially when they were like no um, non veg i was like how am i going to go through <laughs> these three days but i remember coming out of that experience totally happy Uh, tasting various uh, kinds of flavors the kind of auth- authenticity in vegetarian food which which a non vegetarian really doesn't know you know when you're non vegetarian we only think that vegetarians eat paneer and potatoes yeah. you know so yeah that's true and then you don't realize flavor wise profile wise you know taste profile wise there's so much more you can do with which mom's going to be so happy now, yeah i love your mom's food i can't she's not invited me again by the way oh i have God, a complaint that, that's an understanding and the tension of course too <laughs> yeah uh, you were just married yeah, i was just that. married, just married yeah, as well. just i think that was yeah. one of the other, yeah but uh, salman sir was obviously yes. vegetarian as well yeah he was mind. vegetarian was such a challenge all, you know if it's good food people will eat it irrespective of what it is that's what i've uh, come to terms with that um, we of course we are we are brought up and we are we you were vegetarian i was non vegetarian we are brought up with a certain thing but i enjoyed your food i'm sure you would but <laughs> let's not get there uh, it's just a matter of taste i think eventually what tastes good yeah. taste is king there's no escaping yeah. from that but you're someone who lives your life with such intention right yes. there's deep intention in everything yeah. you choose to do yeah. whether that's yeah. career or yeah. personal life yeah. what's been the biggest shift when it comes to values mm-hmm. and how that's aligned in the in the recent years what is what's been the biggest shift in terms of things that you hold dear uh shift wise see i think i was not educated enough to be uh i was not trained to be sensitive enough you know i developed it of course through 
through the way but initially for me one of the biggest things was i remember as a little girl i would uh, be okay with a with a whole lot of caged chickens passing through me and it wouldn't bother me then you know i didn't look at it as something that's going wrong in this world yeah, you know just normal for me it was like this is the way it should be you know back then yeah. because that's how we were taught we were not taught sensitivity i feel mm-hmm. uh from where i was coming from but i see the generation today and i see my kids and they react they react that how can 10 chickens be in that small place little box yeah and sometimes it almost makes me wonder that why didn't i feel that when i was younger why was everything so baseline for me why was like why didn't i ever question it you know why didn't i ever question the fact that there's there's an element that you don't agree with i, I don't agree. today i can't look out of the window very often you know i'm just i'm half the time doing meetings because i don't want to look out you know very often but back then i don't remember doing this at all like how is normalized which is so strange right because yeah. kids have so much empathy the k- kids have but i feel today's kids are better than what i was as a child mm-hmm. i think today's kids and it doesn't come from a place of being vegetarian or non vegetarian i don't think like my vegetarian friends would also react to something like that i don't think yeah that's, like that's i don't so strange. Yeah, I, yeah i i mean you know we want we want taught that these things matter we want taught that every life matters yeah. you know we want taught these things at all and that was my gen i feel today's generation they are so aware they are aware of the fact uh, of stamping little insects they are aware of using an extra tissue i don't remember being aware at all you know I and know and uh, i've always been someone who's disciplined who values people who values time i'm extremely particular about time about uh, you know being honest being uh, correct uh, I'm I'm extremely particular, and I only hang with people like that. The moment I see some kind of dishonesty, you put me off, you yeah. know, and that and that, shows, that and level, shows. yeah. But the point of all of this is that um, when I became a mum, I think the way my kids open my eyes is unbelievable. Like what, what they did, like little things, like. My first step of going plant based or uh, see I had gone plant based I wasn't convinced enough that I'm doing the right thing okay but my son just put things into perspective so well he just said like he's like I you love flash who's my dog but you're eating a chicken so he, for him it didn't matter like it didn't matter that this is a dog and this is a chicken for him it matter that you're hip, almost being a hypocrite yeah. right like you're being okay with one animal and then you're eating another animal so for him to see that it that's... was and it was as blatant as that you know yeah. so i just realized that as a mom there's so much to learn from your children you know mm-hmm. there's so much like this morning we were talking and he was talking about he has a, he had to do his lit circle and we were talking about how to build a community and his first thing was respect everyone's opinions you know respect everyone's opinion he couldn't um uh, enhance what he was trying to say but what he was trying to say is i don't need to moral police your opinion or your choice mm. i don't need to do that you know so what i as a mom did help him expand his thoughts yeah but the initial thought was so amazing like i don't think i have all of that you know at that age yeah. like today over time with age with all of that you do get more sensitive you do get more spiritual you do get you know all these good things happen mm. but these little ones at this age they are aware they are conscious yeah. they want to make a difference you know 100%. which is but there aren't enough of choices for them to make a difference yeah. that's my biggest uh, worry yeah it's also their future right it's their future and the it's us who need to make that future happen for them and that's also yeah. about the yeah. upbringing and how they raised <laughs> yeah. but that first step to being plant based how did that come out from being a hardcore vegetarian even when you were you were at mine to yeah being a hardcore non vegetarian yeah no so um so both ritesh and me were both carnivores literally carnivores <laughs> we liked our meat ritesh a little more than me i i liked bits of it i didn't like you know too much of it but um but it had to be a meal every day in our house mm-hmm. you know and initially we both gave it up for a manat you know we said we'll turn vegetarian initially um it was something that you do for yourself very yeah. selfish motive very you know uh, one of those covid hit 
post that we turned vegetarian we were vegetarian for three years COVID hit and during COVID we said let's try going dairy free let's try going you know without eggs like we were vegetarians who still ate eggs who still had a lot of milk you know like cheese yeah, and all we're not milk drinkers but yeah yeah um so in all of that we tried we started doing these little things and what happened was that when you're non-vegetarian or when you're eating dairy or when you're eating you don't realize what it does when you're off it you know what i mean so when you're off it you suddenly realize that every little bit of dairy that you take in is not making you feel good and making you feel you bloated felt, you felt yeah i felt that so though i didn't think it was a long term solution though i didn't think that being plant based would help me eventually it was my body going against that little bit of dairy that i ate once in a while post that when we realized as a family that uh, if we make tasty food and honestly we don't know how to make tasty food uh, dairy free right you can make a curry you can make ghee i make my butter and ghee at home you make it i make it at home self. and i make it with all my kitchen ingredients but it's time consuming right it's time consuming it takes a lot of prep it takes a lot it's not it's not easy for everyone to do it just like that but the point of the matter is that you can make it as tasty as a regular ghee as a regular you know butter at home and that's what i did what i did my first step was i didn't listen to anyone I just went and did my courses. I did two courses as a as a, you know someone who's interested in the whole science of nutrition. Yeah. Um with Colin Campbell mm-hmm. I did both his I can't courses. Wait to yeah. Yeah, the OG of yeah, yeah, the OG nutrition. And what he did was he didn't decide for you. He just put the facts there. Yeah. which i felt is so important uh, as a pers- as you know someone. So then you get to choose what you want to. and i think that was the transition covid was the transition that eventually happened you know where you started realizing that you could have great food the way you need to have it without animal see products. very often what happens the the reason why plant based food or veganist vegan products get a bad name is because it's an afterthought like you'll give a you'll give a watermelon salad uh, with feta to someone else and to a normal person you'll be like ha huh, take out the salad take out yeah that's not right right like you whole simply <laughs> make a me <laughs> i'm like like sometimes i feel so bad for my kids you know because when they go for parties and all they're given like a pizza with with a sauce cheese. Right? Yeah. yeah which is a sauce yeah. i'm like this is an afterthought this is not an intent if the right. intent was to make it right it would be right that's so right? true so what i do is i send my kids with the cheese <laughs> thank you <laughs> so and, and they are happy about it you know because they because the marinara sauce is vegan the bread is vegan all they have to do is put their they cheese they feel alienated they don't feel they don't like they don't i mean there are times that they question why how what but nowadays they get everything in uh, you know in plant based you get everything like yeah. and all the top companies everyone's going is baby steps but it's going towards uh, oh, that sure. whole intention um so there are times that they question they ask and they only do it because of peer pressure i feel uh, you know because they hear it amongst a lot, lot of kids that oh this is amazing but even if i and i and i always tell them try it like i don't uh, i'm i'm a plant based household in my house you will never get anything but plant based and in my production house we are only vegetarian we serve only vegetarian food and that's also been a change we yeah. we from being someone that would have these lavish non vegetarian lunches today we have but i have the best food in vegetarian there that's so you know cool. the So the thing is uh with these kids also they I tell them you know if you feel like it try it and figure it out for yourself they they don't feel like doing it so they don't feel like it they just they'll try it once in a while and they'll be like no I am not feeling good I'm feeling too stuffy so yeah. that's their own realization and that's what I'd like them to you know eventually be that's as uh, uh, see I'm not going to tell them this is great for you I'm going to tell them exactly what it is 
Now it's up to them to choose also. I mean, you respect everyone's opinion and especially a child's opinion eventually, yeah. Especially for your son to know, yeah. understand what speciesism is without knowing what speciesism yeah. is, right? Like yeah. a dog versus a chicken yeah, versus absolutely. a cow. If they're the same thing. Yeah. I think knowing he has that empathy, yeah. it'd be hard for him to yeah. uh, waver from and that. And when they have play dates at home, I serve chicken nuggets. Like I serve the imagined nuggets. I just serve the, the imagined nuggets. Yeah. Everyone will pick it up without even knowing whether it is chicken, vegetarian, without even knowing it's this. It's just a meal that yeah. in everyone's ethics is clear and they eat it. So eventually you realize if you give great food and it cannot be an afterthought. Mm. Your food cannot be an afterthought. It cannot be, oh, you're vegan, okay, I'll take out this and give it to you. <laughs> it cannot be that way. Oh, you're plant-based, I'll take out this and yeah, I'll give it. It, it cannot be that way. It has to be over. wholesomely prepared. Yeah, you know? so, so right. and, and then it's fine. Then it's, then it's probably better. Yeah, no, 100%. Whenever I'm telling someone I'm coming over, they're like, oh my God, what do I make yeah. for you? What do I cook? Yeah. Like, you're vegan. What do yeah. Like, yeah, but literally anything. You're yeah. Anything, just like, like Ritesh is, he loves dal and bindi. Yeah. He loves it. Like, that's his. So when we're going home, they're like, are yeah, what do we make for y'all? He's like, yeah, dal, bindi. He's like, no, who makes that? We're like, we <laughs> love that. <laughs> like, like, why have we conditioned ourselves to think that the more, yeah. you know, Kale and avocados yeah, and God it, knows like no, what you to become a scientist no, yeah. in the kitchen no, to be plant based. So it's come so far. I've been yeah. vegan eight years now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when I went vegan, it was just like side dishes on the yes. menu. It was like, oh, you'll get like French yeah, fries. A number yeah. of times I've eaten fries because yeah. there's nothing, nothing on the menu. else to eat. Yeah. To going to places that have a separate vegan menu now. And I'll, I've seen that change. I've seen grocery you know, yeah. shelves stocked with plant based um, milk options. So I yeah. know the shift is yeah. coming, yeah. which is um, which is incredible. Well, that's yeah. what that's what I'm here for. You did a nutrition course. Yes. I think because um, you you said, I heard that three people in your um, household do depend on you. So for you to know how the choice correct, would impact yeah. them. Yeah. What did you, what was the biggest takeaway from the, from the nutrition courses? So see, I'll tell you when I, when I was uh, leaning towards giving up animal protein, uh, I was leaning towards it without a lot of confidence because I came from the school of thought that you only have protein in animal, pro you yeah. know, in animals. So. Which is so funny because they eat plants to get yeah, protein. They, yeah, that's, 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 actually that's how precisely. And see, this is something again that I was awakened to, right? It, it, this is what's been happening for years. Yeah. But it's something that I was awakened to. It wasn't mm -hmm. something that I knew on the back of my hand. I was very much on the edge. And today everything is bad, right? Mm -hmm. Like go do this do that do this yeah. a thousand things I didn't want it to be one of those where I would you know uh, re-come back and do something wrong in it mm -hmm. you know so so I took the time to understand it and to make my own informed decision you know while doing it and I was like if I'm teaching it to a child then I need to have my facts right yeah so I scientifically and I and I say this again that I went into understanding the science of plant-based. It's not that I did it as a fad. And that's the reason why six years later, you are still plant-based because you understand where it's coming from. Yeah. You understand that whatever everyone tells you, that it's there's no protein, there's no this, there's no that, is totally and completely false. It, it is a matter of understanding. Like for me, okay, see, Protein was something that I w I understood faster because you know there's so many lentils there's so many, again in that lentil and I tell people that though I'm though I'm plant based and though my kids are plant based I take a lot of trouble to make sure that they're eating their protein content and I, I I'm someone who believes in in on a kid having to have protein I know there's there are n number of philosophies where people have said that you really don't need that much protein sure. You don't need excess of protein if you're not playing that much. But for a child, and this is my thought, uh, and I totally believe that they need protein to develop is what I feel. But I don't think it's not possible in plant-based protein. Like I'm saying that instead of just having one katori of dal, have a dal soup. I mean, inculcate these things in your house, you know. So I actually count my kids' protein. I count it every day. And I know people say, then where's the joy of food? I'm like, yeah, we're a protein deficient country. <laughs> India is a protein def deficient country. Make it your joy. Mm. Don't just keep standing behind on the fence and giving these 
n number of things i have a zillion people oh my god but your children poor thing yeah, i'm like poor you poor you that you're not teaching <laughs> you know poor you that you're not willing to understand it you know at some point people are so harsh in their ways of thinking like they're not open to accepting something very often and i think that's the number one reason why information doesn't go out correct yeah. you know i i i honestly and completely see i'm not someone who'll say don't eat dahi or don't eat this i won't tell you not to eat anything ever mm. i'll tell you try this and i'll make sure i do it to the best of my ability but probably it gets you thinking that maybe i can maybe instead of doing it like five times a week i can do it three times or twice a week and for me that's a win you know for me that's a win that i've helped someone who wanted to do it yeah. you know twice lesser mm. i've helped that person achieve that that's a win on yeah, the whole sure. yeah was there any backlash with your kids being vegan and, you know, oh yeah n number of moms oh n number of cash, parents what yeah what are you doing so i sit you know i do my my kids do their their test very often i do it like once though a lot of people say that oh why are you doing this and why are you doing that but as a family we take a, we do our test every year we the adults the kids do it every two years or yeah. whatever because i feel that's the only way of knowing it today i feel every non vegetarian every vegetarian every person is b12 deficient mm. is d3 deficient nobody is going to make those changes <laughs> like i don't know why like and no one tries to include that we just load kids with supplements or multivitamin or this they don't need all of that they need their d3 they need their b12 so when every whenever anyone says that your kids are you know calcium where's the calcium i'm like it's on the report where's your calcium <laughs> so that's why I, i feel facts is the only way yeah, of doing it you so know that's so true my even my vitals like 100 yeah. 100 every time like yeah. someone asks me but what about I'm this like, what about yeah. that i'm like it just speaking like, for itself i'm like can i see yours <laughs> like please <laughs> because card. i'm here to show you mine right like and and i see that's the whole thing i believe in technology i believe in science I, and everyone says that a lot of things but they're not willing to understand plant based science is what i feel like for me for one i, I I never knew that omega omega was yeah. got from what the fish eats of a plant of the yeah. algae there yeah. of all the spirulina and all of that that's where the omega comes from I always thought it was from the fish <laughs> right I didn't think it was from that so I'm saying I educated myself because I wanted to know yeah and you go straight to the yeah, source you know yeah, you just cut the yeah. middleman if you I mean, go to that not source literally, yeah but yeah no <laughs> leave the middleman alone no, and go straight to the source yeah, yeah. so um you you're so you're so right about that when i was raised vegetarian and you were raised non vegetarian mm. i don't think that was a choice either right yeah that like, wasn't that a choice was... either that's what i'm saying you're not i mean you can't tell them that this is great you tell them exactly what it is right like eventually what they do is what they do um on the other hand see also i have come to a place where you know where sustainability has creeped in a little more into my life Love versus it. just yeah you know so yeah <laughs> so the thing is like i'm like i won't discard something that i had before mm-hmm. you know like i won't discard something that i wore before or had before yeah. even though i won't buy it again today yes. like you know i won't buy a silk sari again but i will reuse the same thing that i have you know what i'm saying so i feel in those those uh, things you help yourself understand it better like for my kids they were playing a tournament uh, in barcelona they both got selected for a tournament wow. and they played at the barcelona following academy following your athlete <laughs> journey as well i, I yeah. don't know what they're doing but they're doing something <laughs> so uh, in that whole process they had to eat whatever food they were given there hmm. and unfortunately they didn't have any vegan options okay. you know over there they didn't have um, any plant based options they didn't have any vegan option I I of course had packed their tiplas <laughs> so they had <laughs> their tiplas and their khakras yeah, yeah over there but the point of the matter is all the kids who ate that the other food that was there and there were pastas and pizza mm. they didn't like it at all and they would come to Rian and Rail's room and eat all their khakras <laughs> and chaklis and tiplas so i'm like it just boils down to the fact that yeah. kids really don't like we have trained our kids that this ice cream is unbelievable and you have to eat it and it's a treat and it's this my kids don't even enjoy it 
like you know they don't because they've never been trained like that they have an ice cream once in a while when they feel like having just like me and ritesh have yeah. it and we have it in non dairy ways whatever oh, so whatever, whatever options, we can yeah. but the point of the matter is that it's not it's not a treat that oh my god i did my homework well i'm going to have this that's what most people think that they're doing right which yeah. is absolutely wrong i feel. because kids don't like milk like growing yeah. up i, I like hated milk. milk i hated i, hated milk. I was milk. forced yeah. to drink cow milk i was you know till it becomes a habit it, right yeah. no, but i'll add i'll add bon vita yeah. i'll add, you know, make it sweeter yeah. i'll make it into milk too. shakes so mothers Me have too. to still force kids to have cow yeah. milk like it's not normalized yeah. it's not something that kids will be like absolutely. kids will be like give me cow milk absolutely But what you said about them being like um, you feeling that it was you felt uneasy or yeah. you, know, you didn't react to it well. The the fact of the matter is that we are lactose intolerant. We are to any other yes, milk absolutely. than our mother's milk. Yes, absolutely. That's our mother's. And I mean, mother, it's just you know, basics, right? Yeah. Like why why do you stop feeding after yeah. a point in it? It's just basics. Like let's not let's not complicate things. I've heard a lot about this needing to be right. Let's let's go. We talk about nature. Talk about being spiritual. Let's go with nature. Yeah. Why do you stop feeding after a point in time? Yeah. Your your child Why? gets all the nutrients yeah. that it gets while you're It's done. What like when I was uh, when I was feeding my first child mm-hmm. and after a point in time they were like mother's milk is not enough you know give this supplement to okay? mother's milk yeah. And that was my first child and I didn't know better and I followed it. Mm-hmm. And I would see him not feel good at all. You know my elder son. With my second son when i realized he was outgrowing the milk you know drinking milk process i fed him real foods you know straight up there also i got a lot of flack like <laughs> <laughs> how can you give this so early <laughs> but i promise you that's made such a big difference in my life hmm. the fact that i gave him real food versus trying to give him you know other things in on yeah. on the way so so honestly and see my kids are my little experiment like i see <laughs> i don't i don't i don't question anyone else about what they're doing and i expect the same kind of respect back like i'm like if i don't question you you don't question me yeah you that's know, you doing like, it like, your way but but the people think they have the right to question you they have the right to say things to you just yes. because you have adapted a route of plant based living you know um and uh, with my kids i see they my kids are up at 6 every morning and their day sometimes ends at 8 in the evening and i see the energy that they have versus a lot of other kids yeah. you know i see they're scrawny and thin again that's a misconception where everyone like if your child is full of <laughs> like you know big and bouncy means they are well fed and they're good children <laughs> and if your child is skinny they're like oh bichara khana nahi de rahe unko i'm like one second like what is wrong with them being skinny that's the first thing i as a parent deleted from my from hmm. my whole thing what is what is wrong with being skinny i mean today we are in a zone where we we go against fat shaming we go against, yeah. why are you not going against shaming someone who's thin that's so true why yeah like why is it okay to just shame like once and then a lot of parents oh my god they are so thin <laughs> i'm like they're fine like i like I, like i take it up you know yeah. i'm like they're fine having thin kids and i and i and i request all parents that don't feel just because your child is thin that they're not getting the right stuff That's so important because that's what I get told when people ask me, "Would you raise your kids vegan?" And I'm like, "Hundred percent, I would yeah. raise my kids vegan." Like, it's fine. I'll raise them with ethics. I'll tell them exactly what it is, and yeah. when they grow up, they can choose for themselves. But yeah. I didn't have a choice growing up, yeah. so whatever. Yeah, I, I don't want to raise my either. children. I would, I'll raise them that yeah. way. You know, so it's um, no, absolutely. In fact, you know, I was raised non-vegetarian, yeah. but today, forget me and my kids. We are today's generation. My yeah. parents are vegan today. No my way. parents are plant based after after, after your all these years yeah i mean yeah. they started it off with us and okay. covid but they have ex- and i'm so proud of both my mom and dad because it's it's not easy for for them you know they come from the whole thought what they've taught you today yeah. is that this is protein this is this. but to undo their thinking that's, at that age i huge. think it's commendable that's like huge, more than me or more than my kids yeah. i salute my parents who have taken that that root wow. and who are stuck by it you know like they don't like sometimes i allow an 80 20 for my kids you mm-hmm. know when uh, because because also i see like instead of someone throwing off that root i'm like theek hai you know sometimes or if they are stuck in like i said in a play area where they have to eat some they don't eat any meat they don't eat any egg but if they have to have like if there's a little bit of butter mix and it's always a 20% it's never like you know whatever i would still say it's okay don't starve yourself you know mm-hmm. see the circumstance and take a call but my parents from living that whole life and understanding that whole life to coming to a point where saying no we don't want to do it 
we are, we were wrong in understanding it wrongly that's so cool i mean i think that's commendable that's commendable and and that's what i that's what i keep saying people who want to open their eyes and see it will see it hmm. like i've had a lot of people in that age group right in in that senior citizen age group who think that whatever you do is rubbish right yeah. and only fair because they lived life their their way Please but who someone who's lived life as a carnivore who's brought up their children carnivore like no no way of saying that you're doing something wrong like who's accepting of yeah. the fact that to be so probably and this is the right truth and you know and yeah. learning that as well yeah. what was that like because growing up in a catholic family yeah growing up in a catholic family i'm sure sundays were all about Sun- you know you no, sunday every day. <laughs> every day every day was like you know a party like it five times a week i would eat i'm i'm in glorian so i would eat yeah. fish five times a week like you know and the others would there would be some kind of animal protein every, every day. day like and every day with ritesh i'm actually uh, growing up in ritesh, a marathi yeah, house no but also. ritesh growing up as a, uh, in a marathi house his major meals were vegetarian okay but the idea of yeah. feast meant yeah. having non veg so his was more weekends his was more stuff like that and then of course with time it became every day yeah. that you know so these are our ideas of feast these are our ideas that we've been taught it's not that way it's just not that way yeah because you talk about the guilty vegetarian as well yeah. you know in in india there's that culture that during yeah. festivals or whatever people would wouldn't eat at home but yeah. would go out yeah. and indulge yeah. in indulge in guilty vegetarians that. is a big thing i think most mm-hmm. vegetarians uh change to at least having an egg or at least having some kind of meat you know chicken once in a while because they feel that their protein is low and and I'll, and I'll be honest about the fact that if you don't look into what you're eating your protein can be low mm-hmm. like your protein can be low you need to figure out your meal i mean we talk about balanced diet have a balanced diet don't just talk about eating one aspect of the diet is what i say you know most often so uh, when whenever there's a vegetarian says you know i don't like it but i'm having it only for my protein i'm like let me help you <laughs> you know let me help you like really let me help and and that's the way you help help it you know get get into each one system with imagine in fact if with imagine we have a whole range for people who want to be flexitarians or who want to give up non veg we're coming out with a whole range of high protein which is meant for vegetarians who don't like that taste or texture of yeah. you know a non veg but who want their protein content I so we're that. coming out with a whole range which is purely you know vegetarian protein so, I'm so yeah so i'd imagine we've changed our whole philosophy to mm-hmm. help people get their protein in the best possible way that we could offer it yeah. you know speaking of imagine yeah. i do want to hear the entire story the name how it came to be the philosophy and how it all started so we were in america we had turned vegetarian ritesh missed his meat terribly and the whole plant based alternative meat segment had started growing over there and we tried and we couldn't tell the difference mm-hmm. initially so what i did was i took that the, the plant based alternative protein and i broke it down and i made keema pav for ritesh and he loved it and everyone and i remember it was there were a couple of people who came home that uh, evening and they had just broken their rosa you know and i was so scared that i'm offering them you know plant based meat and they fasted for so long and they, they i was like almost feeling guilty that i'm offering them that. and they ate it without even considering and they they kept saying this is amazing you made great khima pav finally after they finished their meal i told them that uh, you know it was not uh, the real khima it was a, they were like what are you serious <laughs> so that gave me a little bit of confidence that gave ritesh and me a little bit of, of course it was ritesh's baby ritesh was that we don't have this choice in india we are not a burger eating nation yeah. but we don't have a seek kebab we don't have a khima we don't have um, butter chicken we don't mm-hmm. have any of this in india For if we have it, this yeah. there be a lot of people who would want to you For know sure. at least try it out see eventually and and i say this with utmost sincerity and with with the fact that i believe that everyone is trying to make a, the effort to change i really don't think that people are not making that effort i just think there's not enough of choices to help them yeah. make that it effort it has to be easy it yeah, has I, to be easy yeah i i really i really believe that i mean i see my 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 non vegetarian friends who give up a non veg for the whole month of january because it's veganery like oh, yeah. it's probably a bit of my influence on them but it is their choice to do that mm-hmm. i know a whole lot of people who in the week will say no yeah i'm done with eating this for two days 
but they'll eat it maybe because of their protein maybe because they crave that texture maybe mm-hmm. because they crave the taste they don't have the option of any other way so i feel that's that's in terms of people who enjoy their non vegetarian food in terms of people who enjoy their vegetarian food very often this what is what is what is there in the market which has vegetarian protein there's aloo tikki paneer pakora that's it what is there a lot of paneer definitely yeah. a lot of protein yeah. a lot of paneer here but there's nothing else you know and if you break down paneer you really realize that there's not enough of protein in that paneer as well yeah, it's mainly fat yeah i mean i'd love to state a fact that paneer has so much of protein in in 100 grams which yeah. which is which is the, which is the truth right like eventually so as a company as imagine i mean we started this with the idea of helping just non vegetarians like us yeah where we reached a zone where we felt we needed to help anyone who wanted their protein content to be right mm-hmm. in the best way possible in the most in the healthier way possible with plant protein one of the bases of plant protein is that you have zero cholesterol you have zero yeah. and i've heard a zillion things of processed non frozen i'm, like, I'm yeah. sure you get all all that See, all the time I, it really bothers me that the frozen segment is not educated enough here yeah. because it is such an important segment like i feel we keep our food in the fridge for a week for mm. three days that is all the bacteria that's collected in it i wish someone would tell that tell the lady of the house or the gent of the house or whoever's preparing the meal that by doing this it's worse than you freezing it and reheating it yeah. you know but as a culture yeah, as a culture we've not we've not we've not spoken enough about yeah. it you know we've not it's not, i don't think anyone will not make that change and i genuinely believe that like i coming from only eating off the fire i realize that it is damn tough sometimes like you have for that poor poor lady of the house or the person who cooks for the house is tortured so often because they need to do it every day yeah every and meal has to be it's tiring i mean eventually eventually you're resorting to milk being a meal replacement yes you know eventually you're doing that so give these options there educate like today very often people say that you know I I mean and I'm all out for calling out stuff I'm it's not like I'm not out for calling us but call it in the right way mm. I'm saying don't don't push away food technology yeah. because there's something right about it yeah. Varun said it Varun yeah. said neophobia we have yeah. neophobia about any new food or yeah. you know technology in our yeah. food whereas it's not a bad thing yeah. so much of what we eat is processed without us realizing that everything that we I mean today your oil that you use in your yeah. cooking is processed Flour, don't do everything. that no go yeah. and go and do it by yourself <laughs> like you know that's my point my point at the end of the day is that let's take up issues that need attention like today i would love to say that please go organic please have please help your uh, you know your farmer there and take it straight from them please do stuff like that Yeah. You know I'd love to say stuff like with with my whole vegetarian line it's derived totally from India it's derived from like we talk about soy being bad I'm like why have we ever questioned why misconceptions in, in misconception estrogen. like in India and that's the reason why we can export it all over yeah. we are non gmo soy we should be proud of the fact that there is no genetically modified soy in India mm. but no That's we will raise questions there and i hear nutritionists and i hear people saying stuff like that and i'm like that's the reason why i did my plant based <laughs> course also i did two then and i did one more right now yeah. just to re grow re you know refocus your whole thing new yeah. knowledge uh, and that's what i'll keep doing mm-hmm. like I, that's what i'll keep doing irrespective i it's not that i won't listen i'll always listen but yeah. the point of the matter is eventually give yourself that ability that you're a very intelligent person and you can make that decision for yourself yeah and you can think for yourself yeah. for sure because yeah. soy as you said there's just yeah. a misconception that it had estrogen but as it it's a plant it doesn't have hormones i don't understand these things it's phytoestrogen which I, is uh, yeah. which is so different which is i'm like what are they saying like like i, I don't know i just yeah. i i just wish like i i'm saying like today if you tell me 
like when you talk about plant based protein it's not got in just one source mm. and that i'll be honest about it like when you have a slice of meat you have all of it in that one source and plant protein you may not have everything in that one source but that's the whole idea of having a balanced diet right that you have a little bit of everything and not just one thing yeah. you know what i'm saying so when so so i want to share this information that i have got you know and I hope that this is something that people who stand with regard like when it's most nutritionists when it's most people who stand with regard talk about it and put it out there and discuss it. Yeah. You so there's this documentary on Netflix called Live to 100 and he went across these five spots around the world where people live out, live the longest yeah. and one of the things was they live um they live on a healthy plant-based diet yeah. and a lot of these cultures in Japan or China they use tofu they've been drinking soy milk yeah. they've been you know using yeah. bean curd yeah. for such a long time and they've lived healthy lives up yeah. to 80 90 years Absolutely. and we've never questioned that Absolutely. in you know southeast asia or um south asia for that matter yeah. but for us to have that misconception that oh no you know soy is going to do this yeah. and soy is going to do that yeah. it's it's just misinformation yeah, that's it's, it's uh, sad that's pretty much it's sad i mean is. because it is it is uh, we talk about going regional and seasonal yeah. and all the highest producer of soy is maharashtra latur i'm very proud to say that. that yeah and i just feel that you're ruining all those farmers who take the trouble of growing it including my home we we do, we grow soy every every day you know so that's that's what we do we i come from i'm married into a home of farmers yeah. and you're going to help so many of them if you just if you just take the benefits of it see everything has good and bad if you eat rajma every day there's going to be a problem yeah. in excess anything anything is bad, is bad. Anything is bad in- but sit and think about your diet What's the goal with Imagine, and how do you imagine that changing the landscape of our country? Ah, uh, see, I'm not here to say that I want to be the number one brand in the world. I'm not. With Imagine, my whole my whole idea of Imagine is to be a plant forward, protein forward, delicious protein forward company, mm. delicious plant based protein. There's a lot of products that have been put into the market uh, where. calling themselves plant based veganism dairy free and they are substandard and that's what gives the whole you know the whole segment a bad name i i feel like you need to work every day to make it to the best of your ability and even when you've made it to the best of your ability and launch it launch your 2.0 launch your launch further you know it's always keep growing yeah keep growing. that's what i'm it. doing like you know that's what i'm doing every day like it's not that i'm sitting on oh we are my nuggets are loved i'm going to sit and you know chill yeah. that's not that's not what i'm doing I, every day i work towards improving the cost of it improving the quality of it improving the sustainability of it making sure that um you know we we are easily reachable and it's it's tough it's not like it's easy because i have so many people from the interiors of india saying can we have your products right now we are based at uh, you know bigger cities yeah. and i have uh, a lot of people calling me from sikkim calling me from satara calling me from kolhapur calling me from haryana you know and and i want to do all of that and i i will try every day to make ourselves available again i do i will not underestimate anyone's choice of what they want to do but availability i think is something that needs to be there You get this asked very often I'm sure about the break that you took and what that meant for you even though it wasn't something that the family imposed it wasn't something that your husband imposed for that matter and so many women go through that even me being in the arranged marriage process I've been told that you know oh no you know she's too ambitious she's not she's not going to work after marriage or you know she has to work with her husband what was that like for you and um how does it feel coming back especially because having seen auntie and auntie yeah. goes with you everywhere you are you know that shaping motherhood for you yeah. Did that did that play a role and yeah what's it like being back So see I I worked very hard for all the time that I was working you know I literally used to work like every day of the year like I would take like 5 to 6 days off you know most often in the whole year like I worked on my birthday I worked on new years and I did my my absolute due diligence to my career I felt at that zone and as we talk about growth everything has growth I got married I wanted to give that time to my uh, home and uh, to my kids and that's the reason why I took that uh, 10 year break uh, but while I did that 10 year break I launched imagine mm-hmm. I launched uh, Mumbai film company so I was never not working yeah. is what I think um, I had kept acting on a stand standstill for a while 
it wasn't that i had stopped it i just wanted to take a break from it you know uh but i highly encourage a woman having their own work as well it see i cannot work like how i worked before i cannot be you know out every single day of the day, because i don't want to not because i can't another another girl would probably want to do it and that's fine that's their understanding at home i don't want to i want to be at home when the kids i don't like my kids entering into a home that's without anybody home so um so i plan my shoot at 6 in the morning very often so that i'm back home by 4:30 when they come home you know so i make adjustments in my own life like i mean who wants to get up at 4:30 in the morning and go to work but i found my way around it because i feel that my kids need to know me as someone who's worked as well you know not just um, always available always accessible um, they need to know that i am as disciplined in my work as i am to them as a mom and they need to respect people women who have that choice in their life and that would only happen if they see it 100%. at home so your sons to see that yeah to for my sons to see that so while i did take that break and i enjoyed taking that break and it is something that i totally and completely um am proud of um i do enjoy my phase 2 where i'm back i do think as an actor also i have evolved because um i've seen motherhood I've seen the struggles of motherhood. I'm a I'm a different person. I I I'm an entrepreneur today. I'm so I feel all of that helps in your acting as well because uh people talk about being real. Yeah. You forget to analyze your own life and see how much as an actor you can grow from that itself. So yeah. So it's only added value. It's only added thing. value. We're going to do a really quick uh rapid fire. Yeah. Um the funniest misunderstanding you've ever had with your husband due to your marathi south indian cultural blend misunderstanding i don't we don't have misunderstandings yeah unfortunately that was really easy like yeah. marathi household too yeah um, i mean see i have been someone who's worked in the south industry mm-hmm. when i was from bombay you know and i was someone who did it very early today it's a big deal we talk about but i was someone who did it very early and did it with with utmost love i loved it i always chose it over what i was getting here because i chose the kind of roles that i was getting there um so i think as a person i'm i can adapt very easy so for me it was like wow it's something new to figure <laughs> out you know there was no I, culture shock there was no culture shock there it was very two different cultures yeah. but it wasn't a shock i was i was a uh, very ready to accept it in whatever which way and so has ritesh i mean he doesn't know this whole side you know yeah. he didn't know like i remember when i first met ritesh he was <laughs> like this is going to kill me but this uh, he should be like he didn't even know what uh you know good friday and christmas <laughs> signifies because it was a bank holiday for him <laughs> literally <laughs> but uh, today he is like wow let's and we do this whole um get into your pajamas on christmas and Love have this it. whole um family picture that we all do yeah. at home and uh, he was someone who started doing all these things i didn't know all these things existed <laughs> you know so it's yeah. so cute so it's been a, it's been a really cool yeah, blend yeah it's been a give and of... take and we do we celebrate all festivals we celebrate all, because we see the significance of each yeah. thing and we enjoy doing that yeah that's so cool the funniest prank you and ritesh have pulled on each other so ritesh when i was when we were dating each other it was um, It was April Fool's Day once, and he's called me, and he's like, you know, we're done, and there's no fight, nothing. Was rather you mean hardly fight? So I'm wondering, like, we're done means what? He sent me this message, and he's gone off to sleep, <laughs> and he used to sleep really late. I used to sleep early, so he sent me this at around one o'clock in the night. He's fallen off to sleep, and I have read it at like two <laughs> thirty in the morning, and I am depressed. Like I'm like, what went wrong? I'm like, how? This, what is this cheek and audacity of doing something like that? I have made myself miserable Aww. till till nine o'clock in the morning. He is woken up, <laughs> not remembering that he's done that. So he's woken up and called me and like, "Hi, what's up?" And I'm like, "Fully, I don't want to talk to you. I don't think we should talk." He said, "But what went wrong?" Like he said, "I was like, what went wrong? Are you actually behaving like what went Broke wrong?" Broke up with me last night. So what I was about like, that? "Didn't you just send me the? Oh, it's April Fool's Day, so I send it to you." I was like, "Who jokes about these things?" Like, yeah. I hope he made up for it. Oh yeah, yeah, fully. Uh, that's. Uh, Rade is amazing in that zone. One thing you wish all husbands would learn from your husband. 
just the fact to the kind of respect ritesh has and he has that immense respect towards a woman towards towards his wife he like every time i have to shoot he's at home he's the homemaker at home and he does it with dignity he does it with absolute acceptance it's not like it's your job that i'm doing he does it wholeheartedly and i i mean even in today's day and age i see where men think that it's only their job to move out and not do anything and ritesh is a partner who does everything so i i mean i really think i lucked out ah uh, that's beautiful i think you both did <laughs> in in that sense mangalore and kari or maharashtra and varanbath so a little bit of both <laughs> a little bit of both yeah, yeah. to be gone uh, I can't pick yeah. I'm actually a Pitla Bhakri girl so Oh yeah. I love Pitla yeah, Bhakri. Okay yeah, that wins. Yeah. That wins definitely. <laughs> yeah. Coming from Kolhapur yeah, I can yeah. I can't say anything. Uh making reels with your kids or creating couple videos with your kids? Couple videos. With I don't I don't like creating too many reels though once in a while they are around and we just make it a thing the family does but uh I don't like do, they, they don't like it. They have no patience for camera and all they want to run and play football. <laughs> so they <laughs> shame me. Any advice for anyone trying to be plant based? I think I think you're doing I think you're doing something that's really special for yourself for the environment and um uh, if there's any which way that we can help out in whatever which way we I would be more than happy like if there's someone I I can take questions on my Insta page whenever you feel like uh, I'm happy to help is what I'd like to say um I think it's a choice that is underestimated and like I said don't make it an afterthought and don't let people make it an afterthought for you make it the best meal that you've ever had I love it. I do want to touch upon this really quickly the difference between plant based and vegan because we've spoken about that and I know you you say plant based quite often what that means and how you differentiate between the two. So I I actually honestly for me you know the biggest biggest battle that I face is that every time you try to talk about plant based Uh, living or veganism or whatever i just feel that most most vegans become activists and most non vegetarians become nutritionists yeah. and there's never the a mid route the, you know what i'm saying yeah. i'd like to be someone who's saying i'm trying every day so i'm trying every day i'm trying to cut off an aspect that i think i don't require in my food or in my living every single day and i honestly have reached a point where plant based is because i know with food i'm quite you know i'm quite clear yeah. but every other aspect i'm learning like i'm learning that you know you don't use gelatin i didn't yeah. it, it didn't strike me then i'm i'm learning it every every single day mm-hmm. i'm learning how to use more sustainable clothes more clothes that don't require uh, harming animals or hurting animals i i'm understanding how to get my um my home uh, appliances better my washing so uh, detergents all of this and so every day i'm learning so i'm trying in that basis yeah, so yeah, um, so i don't want to wrongly put up a term saying that you know um, i'd like to say i'm plant based yeah. um, versus saying i'm vegan because i'm i'm not here to tell you that you're wrong i'm here to tell you let's make this happen together that's Let, uh, that's and that's I mean from the bottom of my heart even through imagine like that's our only plea that we we are available for you to take up like I know all my friends who are hardcore non vegetarians they eat only our sausages they still eat non veg it's not like they Ooh, don't we've got one here yeah so they eat so I feel these little changes that you're making for yourself is making me happy and is making me help you make a choice that you are heading towards and i love the branding i thank absolutely you. love the branding thank you so much that the corner so right about that and i'm i'm so glad you made that distinction as well between plant based and vegan that not a lot of people get yeah. because it is a lifestyle veganism is an ideology is an ideology which i do which y- yeah which i do i i'm not here to say that you're doing something wrong is what i'm saying like today even if a non vegetarian sits with me and say can you help me to give up this one meal I'm not even saying one day. If you, if someone says, "Can for me, it's a win," I just feel it's a win. I don't, I don't want to be that person saying you're doing something wrong. I want to be that person saying, "Could we have a conversation?" So that's my, that's my only day. 
my last question to you is what does sustainability mean to you because I know you don't like shopping I know you upcycle a lot of your clothes I know Ritesh has also made kurtas out of his mum sari so coming yes from we've that got into a lot of upcycling actually sustainability for us is upcycling I wear my jeans over years I wear my shoes over years I don't buy anything unless it's required um, even with the kids uh, my elder son wears it and they know this term absolutely well we are recycling our clothes then my younger son wears it without any uh, without any um, conception of you know oh am I using dada's clothes it's not yeah. that so and it is like he does it with pride I'm recycling it I'm recycling then it goes to their yeah. uh, my brother's children so um, these are things that we consciously do I'm, I don't sit in the house if there's natural light I will put off all the lights in my house uh, that's something I do I have an, I, I have an electrical uh, electrical car right now so little things that we're trying we're trying I'm not saying we're 100% perfect but uh, it does mean a lot to me sustainability and I'm learning every day like I said uh, you know upcycling my um, mother-in-law saris means more to me than rejection to it so um, so yeah sustainability is playing a big deal a big big role in in my learning graph right now I don't think I know it as much as I know my food which which I know which which even in my food I'll still say I'm 90% there I still have to understand that 10% which is a big percentage but uh, sustainability I I would say I'm at 70 I'm learning every day and and I will make those changes. I will make those changes. At Music to my ears. <laughs> more power to you. No, thank you. Jinda, thank you so much for doing thank this you. with me. I'm so grateful for your time. I'm so glad we finally No, um, thank you, got to Ushia, do this. And, and good know. luck with your podcast. Thank you. It's uh, you're bringing out all the right topics. So good luck. Thank to you. you so much. And I know this is just going to add so much value to anyone who's trying to make that uh, change as well and move in a more positive direction. So thank, thank you for your compassion. Thank you for the work that you do and also raising your kids with values that you hold so close to your heart oh, and balancing thank you. everything so beautifully. I collect all my blessings for them. <laughs> <laughs> I collect, I keep saying every, when, every, when, I, when I do something and someone says, thank you, it meant so much. It's like, just send blessings for my children. Oh, That's always, all I need. Always. <laughs> so, you, know, yeah. you know how I feel about you. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you.